did governments and politicians get it wrong during COVID in relying on, quote, the science to justify policy? And specifically within that, it's the sort of the use of science in, in politics that I think we're, we want to sort of lean into there. Ben, what are you, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there are lots of governments that got lots of things wrong. I'm not sure that's why. Uh, that the you know excessive um, excessive reliance on expert opinion. I mean, I think that you know one distinction I guess that hasn't really been made that's maybe useful to is even beyond the point about facts and values. There's um, you know having expertise on the facts doesn't necessarily mean that you're great at figuring out what follows for those facts uh, and. You know, sometimes there are issues that are simple enough that somebody, you know, with legitimate expertise can explain their reasoning. And you can say, well, that doesn't really make sense, right? You know, that the, you know, I'll, I'll take your word, your word for it on the premise, right? You know, but that doesn't really make sense. So an example from very early in the pandemic was the point when all the public health authorities were saying, you shouldn't wear masks. Uh, that's actually going to be worse if you wear a mask, that, they, uh, that you'll mess it up, you know, you, you fools, you can't do it right, you know, and, uh, and, and you're actually more likely, you know, get COVID. And if you if you looked at the documents like uh, CDC or WHO on this, um, the stated reasons didn't really make that much sense. It was like, oh well, you know, uh, people will be reckless because they'll think they're safe. It's like, all right, that's an argument against seatbelts, you know. That's uh, you know, so so I think there are cases like that. But overall, I mean, I don't um, I don't know. I mean, maybe like Julie to have a different perspective on this, based on some of what he said earlier. You know, maybe Ellen would. But like, I think. Um, I think, by and large, you know, the the things that uh, governments did most seriously wrong, you know, I, I, you know, I don't think can particularly be laid on the uh, the the doorstep of like, you know, paying too much attention to epidemiologists. I think often it was kind of the other way around. Yeah. Right. I mean, what yeah, do you yeah think? no, I agree with that. I think you know the point was that follow, we're just following the science was a smokescreen. They, they, you know, they people did that to 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 avoid having to justify themselves politically. But they, they weren't in many countries, in, in the US with Trump as president and with our um, uh, joke of a government here. I mean, they just often just, they weren't actually basing their policy on on the best scientific advice, I think. And then often they, they were ignoring it. So it was using it as, as a smokescreen, effectively. Um, also, the other thing is, I mean, to, to, it's a good example of how people use this kind of conveniently. One of the ways in which they kind of, claimed to be following the science which was most misguided was they were claiming to follow the science around behavioral psychology and behavioral science right so like you were saying how you know oh if people wear masks they actually become riskier and and they were saying if we can't do lockdowns because there's only so long people will tolerate lockdowns if we go too early everyone will break it etc etc and that that was again it was it was very very sloppy because first of all this whole behavioral science field is far too young to have any sort of like strong conclusions from it you know what we know about how people behave uh, yeah, no one knew how people would behave in a global pandemic they just didn't have the data right you can you can only base your conclusions on the basis of um, relevant past experience and there wasn't relevant past experience so it would always have been overconfident anyway it also turns out in the case of the UK government they invented things that weren't even part of the science so the, the, the behavioral impact team whatever they're called um, the, the advised the government never came up with the phrase I think behavioral fatigue or something there was some kind of like uh, fatigue phrase they used and, and the government is saying you know we can't um, bring in these lockdowns because there's this thing called whatever it is fatigue and people will tire of it uh, the scientists didn't even come up with that it wasn't, a sci it wasn't a scientific phrase so there was a lot of just hiding behind the science and claiming to be following it so I think you yeah, agree the problem was they didn't um, listen enough to the science and, f and, and base their ba not follow it but base their policy sufficiently on the science rather they just used it as a way of like claiming that they, they didn't have to take any political responsibility I mean I wonder, I wonder how you, you, what you think in that case about the fact that obviously you, it's a global pandemic, right? Everybody yeah. had different responses. So famously in Europe, of course, there was Sweden. Mm. So how does, how does Sweden fit into this? Perhaps their like more apparently laissez-faire approach was maybe arguably the right one in that case because they went, well, we follow the science. There isn't much science. So we, what do you think? Well, I think well, I'm not sure I don't want to hear this, but I think they were following. I think they thought they were following the science. Their chief scientific advisor, when justifying what was going on, was was 
appealing to evidence for saying why this was the best policy. So, I mean, it really just reinforces the point that in areas like this, you know, you talk about data points and and how you join them. In this case, we had quite a lot of data points. There was no obvious, uncontroversial way of joining them to give us a theory of, of what the best action would be in the pandemic, surely, in this case. It, it, it a, a graph's never going to tell you what to do, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like graphs are just graphs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we're in agreement, really. I think it's just nonsense, this idea that they were following science. I assumed it was like a legal move, almost. It was kind of a way of saying, like, oh, if I screw this up, blame him, <laughs> yeah. you know, don't blame us. Like, just transparently. Um, I mean, how could it have been otherwise? There's so many, you know, normative questions that had to go into a balance of reasons, right, about, you know... Uh, how bad it is if if some people die? How mm. bad is it if people miss out on education? You know, how how sort of risk averse? You know, how bad is is anxiety? Like, it's a it's a balance of reasons. And for my money, you know, they should have been much more explicit about uh, explicit about what those uh, reasons were and how they were weighing them. And then people might have been uh, felt a bit more reassured. So I mean, obviously, trust was a big part of this, and there is just this general theme of like, if you say oh, the, you know, the science backs this. There's just this implicit trust that happens, right? So, oh, yeah, so is there? Shouldn't there be? So, uh, it, was, it was loaded into the question that there's been a, you know, a retreat of, of trust in authority, um, mm. oh, you know, talk about anti-vaxxers and things. And I suppose, let's not say I've got sympathy, let's say this. Um, I think um, some people are becoming a bit more aware recently that, let's say knowledge is situated, right? That the the expertise comes from a particular position, a perspective, often a social position. And when people don't see their own, you know, backgrounds represented and the people, you know, doing the science and telling them what to do, they're rightly suspicious of it. And, you know, it's probably not as explicit as them thinking, oh, I can't see what the background assumptions are that they're using to, you know, come up with these policies so I can't be reassured that, that my values are being represented but you know that 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 makes a, some good sense of what's going on I, and it's, it's caused lots of communities to turn away from science you know there's a certain thread of sort of feminist philosophy of science that just rejects it which is awful right because science has got all of the resources and all of the you know all of the money and the, the, the big telescopes and things um, so we shouldn't turn away from it we should use it but I think it would be very helpful, as far as trust in science goes, if the people using the microscopes and whatnot were more diverse, so that people felt like their values went into this balance of reasons. I'm, I have to ask in that case, do you, do you two think that the who is doing the science matters as much, if not more, in that case, than the person who generally is the the face of it, right? Some policy person, some legal person, some somebody else is usually the person who uses the science. It's not the scientists who get carted out on the whole, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I would say that the. Um, I mean, look, I'm I'm all in favor of diversity among people who are you know, actually manning the uh, you know the the microscopes. I, that's a good social value, and so sure, yes, absolutely. But I, I guess I, I guess I have to say, like at least, especially going back to the context of COVID, you know, thinking about that, uh, I'm actually a bit, you know, when you think about the breakdown of trust in science, I'm actually much more concerned about the public face people than the people behind the microscopes. I, I kind of think the people behind the, you know, mostly metaphorical, mic you know, not always, microscopes in this case, like they kind of did the best they could, right? You know, like they, they actually did a reasonably good job, and you know, look, we, we got. Um, I, I think uh, had, you know, had figured things out, I think all things considered remarkably quickly. I think the things you could point to that, you know, that epidemiologists got wrong initially, thinking surfaces matter more than they did, stuff like that. I think that was corrected at like light speed in the great, greater speed of things, right? You know, we certainly got vaccines shockingly quickly, right? You know, people with the microscopes, they're, they're good, right? They're fine. You know, people with the people behind microphones, I'm much more concerned with because I think they did a lot of things actually that were kind of own goals that unnecessarily undermined the public credibility of, uh, of science. So uh, the mask thing that I mentioned earlier is one example. I mean, another, um, I, I also think just times when it just seemed blatantly political, you know, the, the, the sort of um, the use of it, that it was just very obvious that people were sort of leaning on their expertise 
but that you know that they were that it was you could see from space that there were political considerations that were dictating and you know how they're saying it. all of these things i think you know i think unnecessarily again i don't think you can really blame the people with the microscopes but i think all of these things people behind microphones were doing did un did contribute heavily to undermining the credibility of you know health science at like a time you know that's kind of the worst time to do it because you know you need to convince everybody to get vaccinated and all of that yeah i mean i think sometimes people are a bit sort of um sloppy about thinking what what exactly is it that people are not trusting and i think sometimes people think oh people don't trust science they think that science is is bogus and i don't i don't think I don't have the data points for this, but I don't think that's the main issue. I think the main issue people have is what the science is being used for. Because if you think about it, a lot of the things that people are worried about assume degrees of competence that scientists do not have, right? These scientists cannot put these little nanobots into your um, vaccines, which will make you zombies following the government. That is incredible trust in the power of science. It's incredible distrust in the power of authorities and the users of science, right? And I think a lot of it is like that. Like the vaccination, again, why, why were a lot of communities worried about vaccination? Again, they thought Technically speaking, the government were incred able to do remarkable things like, you know, um, sterilize African-American communities, etc. Right. So huge trust in the power of science, but not in the people using it. And then you ask, well, why did they have that? You know, well, you know, Western governments haven't experimented on um, Afro-American. Yeah, yes, they have. I mean, there, there's there's past evidence of this. So I think that sometimes people sort of like get, they make the wrong defense. They start going about how great science is. I don't recognize that what you need to do is you need to get people's trust in how that science is being used and for what purposes. And and that's not scientific, right? That's that's about the, the politics and the ethics and who controls it, who's driving the agenda. And again, you can make lots of reasons why people are justifiably suspicious. The way pharmaceutical companies, for example, have driven uh, research and driven the promotion of certain drugs over others with huge detrimental effects. So people are not stupid or paranoid because they are distrustful about how science is being used. I think they're actually, you know, they may, they may worry about the wrong things and they, in, in the specifics, but the general concern is, is spot on, really, isn't it? Well, okay, so now that we're talking about the past, I think um, as we sort of approach the last section of this debate, it'd be really interesting to talk about how we're meant to approach stuff in the future. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.